Hey, what's going on everybody? It's the CD Guy, Johnny Z here. Thank you so much for tuning back into the channel, and today, this is a sequel to my Top 10 Overhated Metal Bands video. I'm going to be counting down 10 overhated rock bands that I feel just get way too much hate. Let's start things off here with my number 10. I'm going to go with Godsmack. You know, I've heard so many people bash Godsmack, especially for their more recent work, which admittedly is not as strong as their earlier stuff, but still doesn't discredit how important they were to new metal, especially in the late 90s, you know, initially very much influenced by Alice in Chains, uh, with great albums like Awake, their self-titled uh, album, and of course, all wound up their debut record, which are all essentials in my opinion, and, you know, plus going back to modern day Godsmack for a second, 2018's When Legends Rise is a great modern Godsmack record, and, you know, it's honestly a bummer that they're not making new music anymore, so that in mind, again, they're a band that get a lot of hate, but especially their early stuff is their strongest work, but even as recently as 2018, I think they're still making good albums, so Lighting Up the Sky wasn't fantastic, I do believe that's going to be their final studio album, and so if it is, it is unfortunate, like I said, that they're going to be done making new music because I always enjoy their stuff, but, you know, at the end of the day, a strong band here with a decent catalog that just get way too much hate. Number nine, I'm gonna go with The Offspring. You know, let me just say this first and foremost, The Offspring did not sell out with Americana. You know, I hate the term selling out because it has such a sucky stigma around it when used incorrectly. You know, case in point, you know, people still call Metallica sellouts when they never really did in the first place, as far as I'm concerned. But back to The Offspring here, they were a huge part of that 90s punk revival alongside a band like Green Day, you know, and albums like Smash and Americana are absolute classics, and their studio output now is definitely not as strong as it used to be, but I find a lot of the modern hate they get from punk communities to be way blown out of proportion, and I never really understood it. For number eight, I'm gonna go with Bring Me the Horizon. You know, the whole Bring Me the Horizon or Posers discourse is ridiculous, in my opinion. I mean, sure, they're not the same band that they were in terms of style when they first started out, but they've evolved a lot since they first broke into the scene, and that doesn't make them posers. If anything, it makes them ahead of the curve and able to showcase their range in, you know, a wider, different, uh, you know, variation of styles throughout their catalog, which I think is very cool. You know, it'll be interesting to hear where the band go next. They're always evolving and changing now that uh, Jordan Fish is no longer in the band, but just because they aren't full-on metalcore anymore doesn't mean that they're posers or that their recent music should be written off at all. So, for me, I've always said they were a strong band, and, you know, they started off very metalcore in that, you know, oriented direction, and since then they've moved in a more alt direction, right, kind of evolving naturally over time, but that certainly doesn't discredit their work or make them posers, as some people want to say, and that's another ridiculous term. You know, just like I don't like the term selling out. I think posers is ridiculous when used incorrectly, and so Bring Me the Horizon are a prime example of that as well. My number eight here on the list. Number seven, Greta Van Fleet. One of the best rock bands of the 21st century, but Greta Van Fleet just can't get away from the Led Zeppelin comparisons, and while being compared to one of the best rock bands of all time isn't necessarily a bad thing, I just hate the discourse of, you know, Greta Van Fleet are Led Zeppelin light, or they're, you know, they're mimicking Led Zeppelin, they're ripping them off, you know, whatever you want to call it. What do they have to do to get past the Led Zeppelin comparisons and form their own identity without that that whole stigma looming over them? That's what I'd like to know. I mean, their last studio album, the last few albums, as a matter of fact, have been fantastic. And while I definitely hear the Zeppelin similarities, I think after the most recent album, Starcatcher, I think I can confidently say the band have outgrown those comparisons. And let's just say for a second that they are ripping off Led Zeppelin. They're total Led Zeppelin ripoff. Let's just say that first and foremost here for a second. If they were which I don't agree with to begin with, but if they were, Greta Van Fleet are resurrecting a style of rock and perfecting it in a live setting that we have not heard in modern music in over 50 years. And so that's something that really should be, you know, celebrated and not, you know, oh, they're ripping off Led Zeppelin. That's ridiculous. Stop it. That's a ridiculous discourse. And as far as I'm concerned, Greta Van Fleet are a great band. Definitely old school. Definitely some rem you know, reminiscent of Led Zeppelin in a lot of respects. But the Led Zeppelin comparisons have gotten out of hand. And so they're a band that I think have done more than enough to form their own identity at this point. Number six. So let's go with Creed again. You know, I mentioned them in my metal video because I wasn't sure if I was going to make a sequel, but I think it's worth mentioning them once more. Creed are a band that got very popular very quickly. I think maybe some people thought that they were shoved down their throats by the mainstream radio, which is understandable. You know, overplayed music certainly is a problem, but it shouldn't take away from how good or bad the band is, in my opinion. And Mark Tremonti is a tremendous guitarist, and I always thought the hate that Scott Sapp got was way irrational and, you know, out of control, out of proportion. And so Creed are always a band that I thought, you know, never deserved the hate that they got. When you look at lists of some of those disliked rock bands of all time, they're always near the top of that list. And I'll never understand why. 
Besides, how could you hate the band that had the best Thanksgiving Day halftime show ever? Next to number five, I'm gonna go with Stone Temple Pilots. You know, I've been really surprised to see a lot of hate for Stone Temple Pilots, especially in a lot of grunge forums who expressed such a dislike for the band. You know, and from what I can gather, people either dislike them for having been a little bit late to the party in the 90s in the grunge scene, maybe being disingenuous for pursuing a Seattle grungy sound despite not being from the Seattle music area. And, you know, I've also seen a lot of people call them Pearl Jam ripoffs, which I never understood either. SDP were a great band, and in their prime, absolutely belonged, you know, right up there with some of the best of the grunge scene, you know, in the 90s. And, you know, when it comes to, you know, some of the big popular grunge bands from that time period, aside from Stone Temple Pilots and comparing them to STP, I would even say that Stone Temple Pilots are a better band than Nirvana were. You know, and obviously that's just my opinion. Obviously Nirvana were a much bigger band. I'm not much of a Nirvana fan myself, but I thought SDP's music has held up better over the years, not to mention Scott Weiland was an awesome vocalist who we lost way too soon. And so when it comes down to it, they get a lot of hate, you know, but for me personally, I think they're one of the best acts of the grunge and alternative era and definitely don't deserve a lot of the uh, hatred that they get, you know, especially in retrospect of looking back at their catalog, looking back at the work that Scott Weiland did, you know, uh, not just with Stone Temple Pilots, but throughout his entire career as well and comparing them to some of the other big alternative acts from the 90s. And so for me, I think Stone Temple Pilots were great and uh, never understood that, you know, whole discourse where people dislike them, especially in those grunge forums that I had mentioned. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. Number four, I'm going to go with Oasis. Let me just say, Oasis are way more than just Wonderwall. I always thought the whole, they ripped off the Beatles thing to be ridiculous. You know, it was bl blown out of proportion and completely stupid. Because let me just ask you this. Were they influenced by the Beatles? Absolutely. And what band wasn't influenced by the Beatles? Just you try to find an answer. You can't. Every band was influenced by the Beatles, you know. And aside from that, I think a lot of the Oasis hate, you know, not counting the fact that the Gallagher brothers are two complete jerks, which is very valid, uh, is comes from the fact that, you know, they're considered to be overplayed by many, which brings me back to my original point, that they're way more than just Wonderwall. And, you know, on top of that, they're generally, generally disliked in a lot of indie rock communities for combining indie with mainstream rock, which, like I said in my overhated metal video, um, you know, the idea of bands being hated because you know, they were successful, I think, is completely ridiculous and just plain dumb has zero validity to it. Case in point with my number three, we have Muse, a band that a lot of people love to hate. I always found Muse to be a solid band with a good range, changing things up pretty often with every studio album, and they're also a very solid live band as well, but it seems a lot of people aren't fans of corny, overplayed stadium rock, and you know the overplayed part is understandable, but otherwise, there are a lot of other cheesy, less reviled stadium rock bands out there, and besides, they're a great band to listen to if you have a broader musical taste and enjoy hearing a wider range of styles. Number two, Nickelback, probably the most hated rock band of all time, so much so that it's pretty much a joke at this point, but I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I don't even like Nickelback myself. I am not a Nickelback fan, but I never understood why they became the go-to rock band to hate. You know, I don't find them any more offensive to my ears than any other rock band that I don't like. You know, their music never clicked with me personally, but I never got this irrational hate for the band just by default. You know, in my opinion at least, Nickelback are your typical late 90s, early 21st century rock band from that era, and if you don't like them, you probably just don't like that era of mainstream rock, and yet Nickelback have become this, you know, scapegoat band for, you know, all of that, when there are a lot of worse bands that came from that era, in my opinion, that should get, you know, way more of of, you know, the brunt of that dislike that Nickelback do. And so, even though I'm not a fan, I definitely don't understand why, and it's just become like a joke at this point, but Nickelback are just the go-to band to dislike in the rock community. And finally, coming in at number one, I'm gonna go with the original lineup of Kiss, and there's a reason why I say the original lineup here only, and it's because ever since then, a lot of the hate that they've gotten has been, you know, quite frankly deserved and self-imposed. Case in point, the Avatar thing, which is supposedly coming in 2027, Tommy and Eric wearing Ace and Peter's makeup on stage, the lip syncing, etc., etc., but there's no doubt that the original lineup of Kiss, Ace Frehley, Gene Simmons, Paul Stanley, and Peter Chris, were one of those important bands in all of 70s American rock. There was nobody who looked like them when they first started up. You know, Paul Stanley was such a great frontman and an excellent vocalist in his prime. Ace Frehley's lead guitar work on those 70s albums were so influential. And even Peter Chris, who, you know, drumming elitists will say was never a good drummer to begin with, was one of the most unique drummers I have ever heard, you know. He, you know, possessed such a unique playing style that, you know, was, was just so distinctive. Nobody solos like him. It's very recognizable. You know, he has his own style influenced by jazz and R&B. Now, is he a John Bonham or a Neil Peart? Absolutely not. You know, nobody said that, but... He gets far too much hate from people who dismiss him as, you know, being a bad drummer, and I never understood that, nor did I agree with it. 
some people want to write Kiss Off as a gimmick band, and while they may, may have morphed into one over time, you know, morphing into a novelty more than anything else, you know, that 70s band, when they first started out, you know, the music was great, the image was eye-catching, and those live sets were just so much fun, and so a lot of people want to dismiss Kiss as a whole, including the original band, and so there's a good chance that everyone's favorite post-1985 rock and metal band probably wouldn't exist without the work of the original lineup of Kiss and their influence, so when it comes to Kiss's early material, it gets way too much hate being lumped in with the criticism that Kiss got throughout their careers, and so when it comes to the original band, they were fantastic and should not be included in the hate that Kiss pretty much self-imposed on themselves in the years to follow. So that wraps up my list of 10 overhated rock bands, which you guys can see right over here. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel down below, turn on the bell for notifications so you don't miss a new upload, and let me know down in the comment section below what are some other overhated rock bands that you never understood why they get so much hate and dislike from other people. I definitely want to hear from you. And until next time, it's the CD guy, Johnny Z, signing off. Take care, everybody.